We've looked at evaluating definite integrals by both using the limiting definition for definite integrals as well as using the fundamental theorem of calculus that allows us to find the value of a definite integral of small case f of x dx by finding an antiderivative of our function and then evaluating that antiderivative at the upper limit of integration minus the lower limit of integration. Now remember, definite integral values are numbers that we get from either of these two processes. But what if we're asked to find the definite integral of a function that either doesn't lend itself to the limit definition approach, nor is it something that I can find an antiderivative of, but yet it is a continuous function on the closed interval? Well, in those cases, we have what's called numerical integration. And that's actually a process of approximating the definite integral value and approximating it to whatever level of accuracy that we want. Now, with this, a later video will actually look at how you find out your error in your approximation of either the trapezoidal or Simpson's rule, as well as if you have a specific accuracy that you want to meet, how do you determine well, how many subintervals that you break your interval up into? But that's a later video. This one specifically focuses on using the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule to approximate a definite integral if they tell us specifically in the example how many subintervals to use. And for our purposes, we're using equal width subintervals. If you are going to do an approximation of a definite integral using the trapezoidal or Simpson's rule where your subintervals are not of equal width, then you need to go and look at another video that I've posted, the rule and Simpson's rule when we have equal width subintervals. Now, in the previous video, when I did the background of where the formula for the trapezoidal rule approximation comes from, it is it by embedding and using trapezoids to approximate the curve, except instead of using uh, rectangles. And I went through the whole process of why this formula works for it and our common factor that pulled out. So if you want to see that, I'll link that video in the description of this one so that you can get more of the background of it. And then Simpson's rule uses parabolas to get our output of our function values embedded within the process to do our approximation. And you'll notice then that we have our different coefficients because of our parabola work with it. Now, parabolas, when we do a parabolic fit, need three ordered pairs to be fit by the parabola. So when I'm doing that, I need to take two subintervals at a time as I go. So when I'm doing Simpson's rule, my n has to be even. My number of subintervals has to be even for Simpson's rule doesn't have to for trapezoidal rule, but it has to for Simpson's rule. Okay, let's get started on the actual example. So here it wants me to approximate this definite integral from 1 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus x cubed dx using n equal 4 subintervals, first for the trapezoidal rule, and then get the approximation to that definite integral using Simpson's rule. Now what we need to do first is to find out what specifics we have and then what we need to do as our endpoints of our subintervals so then we can run them through the function that we have and carry out the process. Well first for our delta x, our delta x is b minus a over n because we're taking our equal subintervals. A is the lower endpoint of integration. B is the upper endpoint of integration. A is the lower limit of integration, and B is the upper limit of integration. 
So my delta x is 3 minus 1 over 4. So that gives me 2 over 4 or 1 half. So then next up for my subintervals, this is to get the x's along the um, interval that will plug through the function. My subintervals start at your lower limit of integration, that's your a, so start at 1 for this example, and then it ends at 1 plus delta x. So 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. And the next one picks up at 3 halves and goes 3 halves plus a delta x. 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves, or 2. And then starts at 2, and 2 plus 1 half is 5 halves. And then starts at 5 halves, and 5 halves plus 1 half is 6 halves, which is 3. So notice it said n equal 4, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 subintervals. My first subinterval started at 1, my last subinterval ended at 3. So my a is my x sub 0, and then x sub 1 is your 3 halves, x sub 2 is your 2, x sub 3 is your 5 halves, and x sub 4 is b, which in this case is my 3. So I'll just write these under here as well so that you can see them. Now, when I look at the trapezoidal rule, our definite integral from 1 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus x cubed dx is approximately so here we have b minus a over 2n. So 3 minus 1 over 2 times 4. And then, and then that's times f of x sub 0. So take your x sub 0, in this case is 1, and run it through the function. And the function is the integrand of your definite integral that you are approximating. So that's going to be the square root of 1 plus 1 cubed. So that's my f of x sub 0. And then plus, so then we have 2 times f of x sub 1. So that's 2 times the square root of 1 plus 3 halves cubed, plus 2 times f of x sub 2, so 2 times the square root of 1 plus 2 cubed, and then plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus 5 halves cubed, and then finally it's just f of x sub n. So the square root of 1 plus 3 cubed. Now when we go through and just calculate this whole thing through, we're just going to run this through our calculator. Um, certainly you can clean this up so that you don't have as much to key in with your calculator as this first factor. 3 minus 1 is 2, so then you have 2 eighths or 1 fourth there and then keying that through and you'll get that this is about 6.26094283 in that approximation of that definite integral using our trapezoidal rule. Now for Simpson's rule, my approximation for this definite integral, well this is b minus a over 3n. So 3 minus 1 over 3 times 4, and then times, I still have my f of x sub 0, so I still have my square root of 1 plus 1 cubed. Remember, x sub 0 is your a, which is the start of your first interval. And then plus 4 times f of x sub 1, but then 2 times f of x sub 2, etc. So I've can just look here and just remember that I'm going to have that coefficient of 4 
on every other of those middle ones. So 4 times the square root of 1 plus 3 halves cubed plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus 2 cubed plus 4 times the square root of 1 plus 5 halves cubed and then plus my square root of 1 plus 3 cubed. And when we go through and we work that all out, we get that that's approximately 6.230338 um, for our approximation. So with these, certainly they should be relatively close to each other. They're approximations of the same definite integral for the examples that I did. And also, again, realize this specifically was for four subintervals. If I did further and further number of equal subintervals, so if I did eight subintervals in that interval, cut them up into smaller bits, and did I, uh, my approximation that way, I would get closer and closer to the actual definite integral value. Um, but again, our numerical integration is an approximation to our definite integrals if we can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find our definite integral exact value.